Happy Live 12 Day. It is officially in public beta, which means you can apply to join the beta, get access and try for free before it actually releases. This is a really cool day. I'm super excited. I'm going to show you in less than 10 minutes uh, some of my favorite features of Live 12. I, I've got notes. I'm going to try to go through all the features of Live 12 as much as I can, at least make you aware of them and dive deep on some of my favorites. First, before we do that, I wanted to let you know um, if you purchase Ableton between now and early 2024 when Live 12 comes out, you will automatically be uh, able to get a free upgrade to Live 12. So don't wait to purchase Ableton. Um, uh, go ahead and get it now. Uh, get live 11 and then you'll be able to get 12 once it comes out. Now, even a special bonus offer, if you purchase Ableton now using the link in my description, you can get Ableton 11 for 20% off. And then again, you'll get that free upgrade when it comes out. So if you want to support the channel, if you want a great discount, click the link in the description of this video to, uh, to purchase Ableton Live now and then get that upgrade once it comes out. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. It's on my phone right here. Ready, set, go. All right, we're off to the races. Let's see if we can make this happen. A lot of updates to Live 12. In general, it's small refinements, um, uh, things that are improving the experience. Like I said, I've got some notes. I'll talk about some of my favorites, uh, but let's dive in. First thing you're gonna notice with Live 12 is a brand new appearance. It's a more modern look. There's no borders to things. Um, uh, things just kind of all mesh together. So for example, um, a couple of things I really like about this, the colors at the bottom of the tracks makes it a little easier to see. Uh, even preference pane, like you can see there's no borders and there's no division of this, it's there. If I press tab and I go over to arrangement view, for example, you'll see clip overview, beat time ruler, and even the time ruler down here are now integrated into the screen. So it all feels a little more cohesive. It all feels kind of as one, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, there's no scroll bars by default. Uh, until you scroll, you won't see a scroll bar. So there we go, let's show you that. So just little small things like that that really uh, improve stuff. If I go into preferences here, the theme, you can change different themes. You can have it uh, follow your system or do uh, just stay on light or go to dark mode if you have that uh, want to have that set up. And then you can obviously change the tone here um, just to find exactly how you want it to look on stage or in the studio as you're performing. So um, some cool customizations available there. Um, here's a couple things that are really, really cool that uh, I like. Um, we have in the bottom right hand corner, we have this new show hide button. So this is the mixer control. And so this really cleans up the interface instead of the show hide buttons that we had before. So as I click that, you'll see it shows, uh, shows and hides our mixers uh, controls. But if I click this drop down, then I can choose exactly what that's showing, right? Uh, and then when I click this, I can show and hide this. Now here's where this gets really cool. Let's go over to arrangement view. Let's hit that button now. Now we have the mixer over in arrangement view, which is a awesome, awesome addition to this, which is cool. So if you're like me and you constantly went from arrangement view over to session view, now you have uh, the mixer available over in arrangement view, which is cool. And these buttons that we talked about before here, you can customize what they do in session view and they can do something completely different, uh, show and hide different things in session view than they actually do uh, in arrangement view, which, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's, that's some really nice stuff. There's new show hide buttons. As you can see up here, there's our, uh, our browser button in the top left-hand corner there, um, upper right-hand corner. There's our arrangement view buttons. Those look a little different. Updated info view is still there, but this is really cool. I want to walk you through this real quick. So we have this, uh, clip view, right? And then we have device view. And so if I zoom out here so you can see this clip view and device view, if I just create a clip really quickly, okay? So you can see there's my clip. And then let's just drop a device on here. Spoiler alert, uh, brand new browser. And it's really cool. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, but I can now see, okay, there's a uh, device view. If I do shift tab, there is clip view. If I click this button right here, I can see clip and device view at the same time, which is really, really cool. So um, again, completely customize that. I can then again, bring the mixer in if I want to, really just able to customize the interface to, to make the most of the space to see everything that I need to see, um, which is really, really cool. Um, some cool updates to clip view. Uh, so you'll see we have uh, our clip tabs here. Um, these are things that we've we've previously accessed in different places. There's where we do all our program changes, things like that. We have these brand new tool tabs, these brand new tools to transform MIDI. Um, I, I don't have time. Let's see, I've got uh, six minutes left. I don't have tons of time to show you this. And this isn't a big thing for live performance. 
I initially didn't think these transform tools were going to be like very useful, but then I started experimenting with them and I realized how quickly I can just like get lost in transforming stuff. Um, oh man, I wish I could share. I don't have tons of time, but if I just click and add some MIDI notes here, what I can really quickly do is use some of these tools like arpeggiate and just completely transform this uh, into something completely different. So I could select all of these and just change uh, what's happening here. I can completely transform this into something else. Uh, quantize this, um, uh, do some rhythm things. I mean, just all sorts of different ways to transform MIDI. Uh, I know that's not a compelling demo. I'm just telling you, dive deep into this and just try it. Even if you don't think you're going to use it, you're, you're going to love it because there's so much there um, that you can explore and that you can see, uh, which is cool. And it's just, it's kind of fun to mess with. So in Clip View, um, uh, we have these new Clip View. We have uh, tool tabs. Uh, we have these different options here to select um, uh, our editor views, which is nice. Uh, in Clip View, a couple things that are really cool that uh, those of you that do a lot of editing will really like. I can select multiple notes. Oh, let's get out of uh, out of our editing mode here. Go back to notes. I can select multiple notes, do Command J to consolidate them. Uh, I can select them and do Command E to split them, um, uh, which is called chop notes. Or I can select an amount of time like this, okay? And I can do Command Option J to uh, fit to time range, which is, uh, is, is pretty cool. Uh, there's a brand new browser, right? Let's talk about that because I've been kind of skipping over this. Uh, let's see if we can clean up some of what we had here. There we go. Uh, the browser is very, very cool. So first off, we have these filters. So I can go up to all and I can see all the filters that are available to me. Or as I click through into drums, it's just gonna show me filters that are present and available for that. So I could say, Okay, I'm looking for, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a drum pattern. There's my drum patterns that's acoustic and I get all those options available to me. If I wanna reuse that, I can save that search for later, which is really, really nice. And if I did a search previously that I was like, man, what was that thing I searched for? This is pretty cool. I can go back here. Now all my browser history is saved. So all my search history is saved and I can click through backwards or forwards. Uh, to, to see what I've searched for previously, uh, which is a really cool update uh, to the browser that's neat. The, the, the intent, the idea of the browser, I think, is to help you find what you're looking for a lot faster. This next feature included in the browser um, does this probably better than anything else. So uh, let's find like a, a pad sound here. Um, I've done a lot of searching for uh, pad sounds, but let's go sounds. Um, let's clear our filters. Let's just search for pad, okay? Um, let's do this airport pad. I'm a big fan of that. Okay, I like this sound. Um, I want a sound that's kind of similar to airport pad because I'm kind of building uh, a vibe. And I know I like this sound. I want something that's similar to it. So what I can do is click this sound similarity search button and it's going to show me sounds based on how they're tagged and based on how Ableton has analyzed them that Ableton believes are similar to this. So for example, I can drag, uh, let's drag this MPE ghost choir pad in right? And I could replace what I had, or let's actually leave airport pad. Let's drag this next to it. And we can just listen really quickly. Okay. There's MPE ghost. There's airport pad. I mean, those work pretty well together, which is cool. So experiment with the sound similarity search. I think that's really cool. It gets really, really cool when we apply it to drums though. So let's clear our search. Let's go to drums. Let's say I got two, two minutes and 28 seconds left. Uh, so let's just drag this, this uh, one of these kits in here, alert kit, that's fine. And um, let's just program uh, a beat, okay? So nothing fancy. Okay, told you, nothing fancy. All right, so we'll capture that. Uh, and let's just have it start from here to here. Now, terrible beat, I know. Terrible, terrible beat. Okay, so I like the beat. I really don't, but just play along with me. But I, I want to find a different sound. So what's cool is I have this sound similarity search built into uh, drum racks as well too. So I can click this and I can audition different kits directly from here. Right, it's just by pressing play. Or I can say, okay, I like pieces of that, but let's maybe swap the snare out. So you could see this is kind of similar. It's like hot swap version 2.0, right? Which we've been able to hot swap for a really long time to go, okay, here's snare samples. Let's try them out. 
But with that sound similarity search, it's not just going to show me everything. It's going to show me things that are similar to what I have that I think are really, really cool. Okay, so I've got uh, one minute left. Let's see what I can get to. Um, there's some new devices and effects included. Meld, which is an MPE capable instrument. Uh, Roar, which is kind of like drum bus, but can be used on anything. Granulator 3 um, is really cool. There's a brand new performance pack, which I just, I don't have time to, uh, to really dive deep on, obviously in this video, but it's a Max for Live device, that, uh, a pack rather that you can uh, get. Uh, let's go to packs here and let's show you, see if I can show you a few of these things. Performance pack is really cool. We have performer, which allows me to create custom interfaces um, in live and I can assign them to absolutely anything. So I could go and create a button just like this. I could go to macro editor. I could assign eight different things to that one button. I could clip, uh, click uh, map and then move this fader and it's automatically mapped there. Um, and then I can pin this to the top of Ableton. And now I can create a custom control surface directly from here. This is a Max for Live device, which is really cool. Um, there's a couple neat live looping things, which we'll do a separate video on these. Uh, arrangement looper just allows me to create different loop points. So I could press play. Oh, my time is up. Let's finish this demo out. So I could press this and then uh, let's turn on one bar and it's gonna automatically move my loop brace and it's gonna just loop for a bar until I'm ready to remove it, right? There's two bars, right? So it's kind of DJ style looping, which is really cool. Uh, variations allows you to save different variations of your entire live set and recall them instantly, which is cool. Again, we'll have to do a deep dive on this. Uh, and then prearranger is the the trick to doing uh, the, the type of live looping that you would do in session view using the IEC driver, people like Elise Trial do. Um, uh, you can do that in a range of view now. And again, we'll dive deep on that. Okay, final thing, because I ran out of time, the, the timer already went out. Um, you know, there's scale mode in Ableton Live. We could talk more about that. And um, uh, that's a great thing for, uh, for making music. Um, the tunings feature is really great if you need that. I did a lesson with someone a couple months ago, Agil, who has custom tunings for uh, virtual instruments he's playing. Um, those are really cool. But I want to wrap up talking about keyboard shortcuts. And you're like, wow, well, really keyboard shortcuts. But um, there's some really cool updates Ableton made to keyboard shortcuts that I think are really cool. First off, um, they made Ableton Live 12 very accessible. So for people that use accessibility features built into the Mac, and uh, I think it's coming to PC as well too, uh, things like voiceover that would read uh, menu options to you and basically allow someone that's uh, vision impaired to create in Ableton uh, just uh, and hear the menu items back to them. But one of the things they had to do in order to make that happen is to allow easier navigation of Ableton just from the keyboard. So really quickly, final two things I wanna share. There's this brand new navigate menu up here. Uh, and there's these options that you can select using the option key, keyboard shortcut wise. So option zero takes me to, oh, let's turn this off so you don't see a zoom. Option zero takes me to the control bar. And then I can go up to navigate and uh, enable use tab key to move focus. And I can actually navigate, see how I'm clicking through there using the tab key, shift tab can go back. And I can actually turn off my metronome using my arrow keys and tab key, which is really cool. Uh, again, I can do option to go through all these different modes, which is cool. Completely navigate from my keyboard, um, which is really neat. Let's turn off the tab key to move focus. Um, final, uh, I'll share one final thing that I wanted to share that I really like. Uh, that's that's one of my favorite things. There's now momentary keyboard shortcuts. So um, two of my favorite are uh, one, if I'm in arrangement view and I wanted to go over to session view just to adjust something, instead of pressing tab, making the adjustment, pressing tab to go back, I can hold tab, go over, make my adjustment, and when I let go, it's automatically gonna come back. If I wanted to solo in place, select something and hold S to solo, and then when I let go, it's going to go back, which is really cool. Uh, automation mode, this is a big one. I can hold automation, make my changes, and then go back. Uh, final thing, in automation mode, uh, if you've always been, uh, it's been a pain in the butt to like create breakpoints and then go to draw mode, I can hold B now, create my, uh, do my drawings of whatever I want to there. And then when I let go of B, now I have those breakpoints to adjust. So that's just a very quick uh, look. I've got tons and tons of notes though of uh, Live 12 features all the keyboard shortcuts. I put all of those into a course that's available for From Studio to Stage subscribers. Um, if you have a From Studio to Stage subscription, it's available today at the open public beta of Live 12. It's available today for you to check out. If not, this is a perfect time to consider subscribing. 
uh, to get access to this course. I've included the link on how to get that in the description. Just click there and you can subscribe. Get access not just to this course, but every single course I have, every single patch preset and template I have, a monthly uh, 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 or weekly group coaching call, exclusive discounts, um, all sorts of really cool things. Again, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you want to check out Ableton Live, now's the perfect time to buy it. It's 20% off. Click the link in the description to purchase it. And when Live 12 comes out, you'll be able to upgrade for free to get that. Thanks so much for watching. If you want more content, uh, not like this, not like a hurried, quick run through, but if you particularly use Ableton Live on stage to perform, particularly for backing tracks uh, in a playback scenario, this is the best place, not just on the internet, but in the world to learn how to do that. So hit the, the subscribe button, enable the bell icon so you don't miss out when we post new content. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Leave a comment below to let me know what feature you're most excited about, what you want to see more content on about Live 12. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.